virtual collabs. This is how we do it in isolation. So we've got MKBHD on the other end. And just before I dial him in, the reason we're making this is that Marquez and I, I think we're the only two YouTubers to go hands-on with Xiaomi's Mi Mix Alpha. And that phone got me thinking. We're in a time when we've got 360 degree wraparound displays. We've got foldable phones. We've got rollable phones. This smartphone market looks like it could go in a hundred different directions. So I'm kind of excited to see where Marquez thinks we're headed. And then we'll bring it back to the present. What's the best current 2020 smartphone? Marquez, welcome. Can you hear me? Hello darkness, my old friend. Yeah, gotcha. How you doing, Marquez? I'm great. I take it you're alone. <laughs> yeah, empty studio. So we're going to break down the different ways that future smartphones could go. So one mm. option is wraparound displays. So we've both used the Mi Mix Alpha. In your video, you kind of rounded it off by saying, it's cool, there's a cool charging animation, but that's pretty much it. So having had time to think about it, do you think there's ever a possibility of like a wraparound screen being useful? Yes, it could be useful. The idea of like, how do you improve on the current smartphone, wrap the screen around the back, what does that get you versus what are the sacrifices is, is a really tough one because there's a lot of challenges. So I don't necessarily think that's the future that all smartphones will have. I think it's a cool idea that could be useful, but I don't know if that's the the ideal future. Part of what I said in my video is I talked to the public and I kind of showed them the phone and I said, what do you think? And the general consensus was that it is cool, but why do I need apps on the back? Surely I could just flip to the right, which I was like, fair point. Yeah, a lot of the usefulness is like the screen wrap around the back, like the only advantages we saw were flipping it over and having like the separate space. But yeah, you can just swipe over. And then this sort of wrap around animations, which are very cool and hard to replicate, but also not necessary. So it's that, that's more of a form over function type thing for sure. I am with you. And yeah. so so we can put the wrap around screen as a, as a probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what about foldables? Last year we had our first look at foldables. There wasn't anything like one killer feature and there were a lot of problems, but we forgave it because first generation, it's fine, they're experimenting. But now we're starting to see second generation foldables. Has that given you like more or less of a hope for the future? I think so the main feature of foldables, this is where I have like a, a little more optimism, is the general concept of just fitting some bigger screen. But there's, as we've seen, like 900 ways to do that, whether it's like a, a regular size phone that flips down into a smaller thing in your pocket, which is kind of refreshing, or just like a huge tablet size that you normally wouldn't pocket. But I think it's gonna take a couple more generations to really get that down. Okay, so like you said the Z Flip you like, so which is your favorite style? You know, the flipping or the, the kind of folding? So I haven't played with the Mate XS yet. I want to, but as of right now, my favorite folding style is the regular Galaxy Fold. I think having like a real tablet size versus closing it up and having like a regular phone. Yeah, I completely agree. You probably face the aspect ratio problem as well, right? That kind of, you don't really need a square for a lot of things, right? Yeah, I don't think people talk about that enough. Like a square is weird. It a is square weird. is weird. <laughs> but yeah, if you could open it up to like a 16 by 10 tablet, but then when you fold it, what is that? Like, that's why it's weird. Cause how do you answer that question? Do you sacrifice yeah. the outside or the inside? Was there ever a point when you thought, you know what, can someone make a triple fold? Because then you could actually open it into like a, an actual widescreen. You know, I didn't think about it until I saw it. So that does solve the aspect ratio problem. A 16 by 10, 16 by nine tablet that folds up into a regular size phone. I could see it. Super early though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 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 where do we stand on foldables then? Is it like the same kind of cautious optimism that you had before they started? Or is it more that actually it's more looking like it's probably not what we thought it was? No, I'm definitely still optimistic about foldables. I would put them in wait and see. I think when we see okay. like right. the next couple attempts, next couple ideas, and we start to get a couple generations in, that might be where it's at. The reason I ask is that TCL showed off a rollable phone and that's completely rocked my confidence in foldables because it's one of those things I looked at and for the first time I was like, holy cow, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, so you could put that in, I guess that's like a different category. It's not folding, it's just using the flexible display differently and, and sort of rolling it out. Uh, same mm. idea 
idea of like having two different form factors accessible to you in one device, but you don't have to worry about a crease anymore. So it seems like an advantage. But then how does the rollable thing last over time? Where is the tech on that? I but think I think I think things like that, like things like durability, that stuff gets ironed out. If the form factor makes sense, things will progress, right? Yeah, and I think that's a form factor that does make sense. So a lot of things that could potentially be a problem, but this is kind of, this is a, this is a hopeful. Yeah, yeah, I'm very curious about this. Again, all we have is the one TCL paper prototype, so cautious optimism, mm. but I like the idea. And I suppose what that leads to is, as soon as you can start shape-shifting like this, do you not think that opens like a whole other can of worms? Like, what if my smartphone was my smart watch, and like I could just clip it round and all of a sudden the UI changes? Or what if my smartphone was also my laptop? Do you have any ideas on what the future phone form factor could be in five, 10 years? When I ever I think about this, I feel like maybe I'm gonna be that old guy that's like not forward looking enough, but I don't see phones also being other things. I feel like I'm mm. just always gonna wanna have a thing that I use and then put away and stop using. And then use You're gonna them. be that you're gonna be that old guy who's like, get off my lawn. Maybe. Kid. I'm scared I mean I hope I'm not, <laughs> but like that's that's how I see it at the moment with the limitations of the tech. Mm. So, okay, so just before we get to kind of the end of it, which is the top current smartphones, there's a couple of things that I kind of just thought I want to ask you, just misc questions. So, mm. Escobar, so we both made videos on Escobar Fold 2, and we kind of said a similar thing. Uh, we explained the background, we peeled off the stickers, we kind of said we didn't recommend it. But in your video, you went hard. Were you at all worried about security? Because I was, <laughs> like, I was the first person to make a video on it, and to be frank about it, like, I wanted to make it clear I wasn't recommending it, but I didn't want to get shot. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I don't think I ever really had any genuine security concerns other than them now having my address, but uh, I think I said what I felt needed to be said. Okay, so moving on. So your iPhone 5S review, it just popped up in my feet. Your videos have a weird way of doing that. They just, <laughs> they just free appear. Yeah. It got me thinking every year, it feels like we use phones that are the biggest they've ever been. And yet somehow the year after they get bigger. Do you ever kind of wish that like you could have the best phone that isn't a seven inch, you know, tablet almost. Yeah, this is why I made a best small phone category in my smartphone awards is cause like five years ago, that exact question you just asked me was still a huge question. Like phones just yeah. keep getting bigger. Like what about the small flagship? I still think people like small flagships. Like when we get the new small iPhone, I think that's gonna be pretty popular. But yeah, I, I think we're also still gonna keep getting. <laughs> bigger and bigger phones. <laughs> but it's like, it's crazy. Cause like a lot of women, a lot of kids, they can't use flagship phones, but obviously they still want flagship battery life, best cameras. Do you think it's companies like being a bit negligent? Like what do you think's going on? Well, I think fundamentally people feel like they're getting more for their money when they got a larger Thing, a bigger screen especially. So mm. I think people are gonna feel like they want a bigger screen more often and it's great for the user experience and everything, but miniaturization is also really hard. Uh, you could call it negligence or you could just call it a challenge to make a really yeah. good small phone. So like S20s, which was your favorite size? That's such a good question. I, I really like the S20 Ultra, but using the regular S20 was sort of refreshing to have a flagship phone be smaller. I know it was still a 6.2 inch screen, but it, it was smaller. The Ultra is my favorite size, but I really liked having a smaller phone. Okay, so last thing is the best current smartphones. And I'm curious about your answer, because I think a few months ago you would have said iPhone 11 Pro, but now that we're starting to see like the new wave of 2020 Android flagship, yeah. do you think that they're doing enough? Enough to, well, what does enough mean? Enough to kind of earn your recommendation to let's say someone who's coming from an outsider ecosystem, like a BlackBerry phone. <laughs> well, if the answer is, is it gonna be a good replacement for your BlackBerry? Yes, they're doing enough. <laughs> Phones like the Galaxy S20 are looking pretty sharp. Like that's quintessential refined Samsung. I don't think they're all doing great. I think there's <laughs> there's some others that have been a little lacking, but yeah, we, we got some good ones already this year. You know, phones like Find X2 Pro, you think these phones are really like top tier? Um, hardware wise, yes. Again, if you're, if you're talking about like whether it's a good replacement in this market, that's like now you gotta look at the OS and the software support. But uh, if you're just looking at the tech, they're, they're right up next to Apple with the tech. That's what I was a little worried about. Like I watched the, the Oppo live stream and I was just kind of thinking in my head, this phone is the ultimate spec sheet, but at the same time, it could be just software not being tailored to like a Western yeah. market. Yeah, it's a lot, that's a big problem for a lot of these companies that have such big customer bases in other markets. Frankly, it's an afterthought trying to sell a lot of phones here. And if you are trying to compete here, you're up against Apple and Samsung. So 
that's tough. Yeah. Markets are actually super important when it comes to competition. Okay, so just so we can get like a, a clear answer. So person coming in owns no smartphone. What would you recommend them? So they don't have any, any foot in any ecosystem at all? No feet. <laughs> Do you have a budget? <laughs> Let's say they could afford any phone out there. Sure. But, you know, their value matters. Okay, I would start with Galaxy S20, and then you could sort of figure out what you like or don't like about that and, and go from there. So if you're like, oh, I love Galaxy S20, wish it was bigger. Well, we have the Plus, we have the Ultra. Or if you wish it was a better camera, like we can go Pixel, we can go other, other phones. Okay, so you almost see choosing a smartphone as like a journey. You want to send them down a path. It's, uh, yeah, it's one of those, like, what do you call like a choose your own adventure? Like, I, there's no one answer. Yeah. There's like <laughs> 17 different answers, depending on how you answer the questions. If it was like someone like me, and like you said, no allegiance, no budget restriction, go for whatever phone you want, I'd probably say just get an iPhone 11 Pro Max and like that's a good phone for like two years probably. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of good stuff out there. That's pretty much it. Thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks back for having me. Back to isolation. <laughs> back to isolation, exactly. <laughs> okay, peace Marcos. Have a good one. Okay, so that was that was pretty cool. That was MKBHD. I'll drop his channel in the description if for some reason you haven't heard of him. And yeah, that was our thoughts on current and future smartphones. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.